So first off, we'll go about this globalization. We'll have a little chat about uh, reverse innovation, which is, uh, which is I've lifted from a book, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll share the references at the end, where we talk about creating far from home, but winning everywhere. So that, I think that's where the future is. I want to get some clarity on the C word finally today, what that really means. And also why comedy and animation is really the experience that's going to be driving the future of kids' TV. And lastly, why cats are important to kids' TV. Okay. Let's talk about globalization. I think this picture we took in the Philippines during the Halloween sums up what we're trying to do. Is if you have great content, which is the for, sort of like the first phase of globalization, of just taking the content out, if you want to localize it. So if you have great content and it does connect, it's going to connect wherever it is. At this event, there was over 1,500 people attending. They had to extend the day, and you got people dressing up as um, Adventure Time, which is a great result. So the first rule is you've got to have great content wherever you get it from. The second point, as content, as you start to localize a little bit more, is it's an amazing thing, but uh, I see it all the time, is people actually forget that the experience, or the TV experience, is actually 50% visual and 50% audio. So people need to not underestimate the importance of localized dubbing. And so we have a, we have a dubbing person in Taiwan. This is a, a partnership we did with the high-speed train in Taiwan, where they decked out the whole thing in Cartoon Network thing, uh, um, um, designs, which is a great way of saying that the people are embracing the content because it connects. Then another level of globalization is obviously global franchises, which you don't want to mess around with too much. In fact, in this Ben 10, which is a global franchise for us, one of the uh, in installments was a, a TV special which we actually uh, produced with a studio here, Tiny Island in Singapore. So there's ways to contribute to the to local content on global franchises. But then you can also localize a little bit more and you can move into formats. So obviously we, we took a game show format and, and we all know that there's plenty of formats and reality uh, shows and game shows and there's a large trend in, in scripted formats that are traveling out uh, around the world. But obviously taking this format and even localizing it even more and we took kids from Malaysia, Thailand, Philippines, Singapore, and working with our friends at Astro Productions, we produce uh, this show in, in Kuala Lumpur. But the one thing we found for kids, they all like to break stuff wherever they come from, so that's important. So the next three levels of globalization I want to talk about briefly before we get on to reverse innovation is um, the, the, the deepest level, which is absolutely local content for the market. Then the second one I'll talk about briefly is regional. And then the last one is producing international quality content in, in, in your market and exporting it. Our original production team in India do this on the first layer of producing dedicated content. This is uh, Chris on his birthday from Roll21 being mobbed by kids. This is a completely local production out of India, for India, at a price point that makes sense for that market. It's still a virtual model where we, we're tapping with, uh, with our talent, with our key partners in Malaysia, Animasia, who do a great job working with us on this. But this is produced for India, and this is local content, and it's in the top five ratings. So it's important that that's the deepest level you can go, is creating content. But the one thing I want to warn, as you're aware, content is in fact still marketing for you. So no matter how local you go, you need to make sure that content still speaks your brand and fits. So I'm just going to show a little little clip uh, from a TV special they did where Chris goes into outer space.
So the guys have done a great job collaborating with the uh, uh, people in Hong Kong, Malaysia, and, and India to produce that very, very local content that works. The next level, regional glo localization, you should take themes that are working within your region. So what we did was we took Indian Mytho, which works for us in, many, in, in sort of South Asia, and we took a bit of anime from North Asia, we put it together, and we got Indie May. So, so we've made a few TV specials to experiment in that uh, place, and I'll just show you uh, one of the promos for the second one. The third one, we're in production now, so that's just a draft of the poster. But it's important to, you know, to, to, to um, mix it up a little bit. So this is more of a regional play. Not so specific as the one before. This may not have as much international appeal outside of APAC, but nonetheless, it, it works across the borders within APAC. So I'll just show you a little thing of that. The chain one has been sold. Don't worry, we'll get it back. Right, it was bad. They will give you each other more stars. For you, ten for years. You sure don't think this is easy? Okay, so then the third layer of globalization is when you actually produce international content within your region and export that. And we've just commissioned our first um, comedy adventure series out of Australia, which, you know, which is developed there, made there. Um, but it's, it is taking an element from this part of the world, mixing it up with normal school life, and we've taken sensibilities from around the world. So that, that one we want to export, but still has, still has its heart and measure. And of course, on this globalization level, if all that doesn't work, the last thing you should be doing is a matter of hygiene, and, and um, is all, you should do on-air branding. So that's what you can always do at the last level. have fun. I'm going to get a call about Warner Brothers about that. I didn't ask permission. Um, okay, so what is, how is, how is all the international channels doing was the next question I asked myself in this you know, competitive environment and with the pressure to do more and more local content because there's, there's international players are so-called very big, maybe a little bit slow. So I looked at the, the ratings uh, across, across these seven markets and in fact this year over last year you know, the big, the big four or three, if you prefer, have actually grown an average 11% in ratings um, against the local operators. The, the local channels in those markets have actually dipped a little bit. And interestingly, the audience share um, is about 73 international and about 27 local. Now, the other prediction I have is obviously that's going to shift a little bit because, as you've seen in Europe and other places, there will be more and more local players. That is as it stands today. So the other threat when you're moving into this uh, globalization and, and, and is to disrupt yourself. So in Thailand, we went out there and launched a FreeSat channel, managing our relationships uh, with True Visions and what have you as a premium offering. Um, so that schedule is not very clear, but the point I wanted to get across here is that this was mainly international content we launched with, working with our partners, um, you know, major container broadcasting uh, in that market. Now, the result is, so far, very positive. We've blown it out of the water in 11 million homes with that international content. Of course, it's dubbed, localised, dubbed very carefully. But the point is, I want to get across here, is that this is the other shift. Yes, the, the international channels are quite strong at the moment, but local will get stronger. Distribution will be each, uh, uh, an issue, and I will talk about that in a little bit. So it's important to disrupt yourself. So, so obviously, you need to be getting into that Reach game or that DTH or free sat as you want to call it. Okay. Reverse innovation. And the reason I want to talk about that, if globalization is hygiene and that's maybe best practice and all the different strata that you can do within it, I think all of us need to be a little bit more forward looking. And I like to call this um, where I saw it quoted this is uh, not best practice, this is next practice. This is what we all should be trying to do in this part of the world, to, to go against the flow and get ideas back up the stream. Now, all of us, my friends at the Mouse House and, 
and the Orange House have, have done this very well as well across the world and continue to do this. And you know, we've done this with even Gumball, which was created by a French creator, Ben, made in the UK. It's gone to the US, it's won a truckload of awards. We've all done this. But I just want to share with you something that is actually happening now that's the IP came a little bit further afar. And that's Tunix. And this is probably a good example of uh, reverse innovation starting somewhere. This was created by our team in Latin America, started off as a digital offering, you know, then went online, community based, all, all the, all the um, bells and whistles online and all the rest of it. And then we, we collaborated with them because the next step in this is you need content to take it to the next step. So as, as proof and point from this part of the world, we worked with a great studio here, Sparky, and we created um, some content for this. And discussions are ongoing how to make this global, but this is actually something that's in, uh, actually in the middle of reverse innovation as an example. So I just wanted to show you also a clip um, that we made here out of Singapore in collaboration with Flatamp and talent from around the world because, once again, the virtual studio is the future as well. And this, this, today's talk is not about studios because bricks and mortars are dying. So I'll just show you this clip. <laughs> non-dialogue travels across borders as well. Okay, next on the topic, I wanted the C word. Everybody has different meanings for that. Of course, we're talking about content. And a lot of people like to say content is king. It's true, in fact, you could argue that content is two kings because everybody now watches and does something else. And that's important when you have a multi-platform strategy with all your content. The one thing, I think there is another C word that actually we need to pay greater attention to for the future of, of, of our business, particularly in kids. Now, while uh, content may be king, you know, distribution is queen, and she wears the pants. Uh, um, I didn't come up with that quote, so I've got uh, Jonathan's uh, quote there. This is still not the C word, but I, I do believe in this point, and, and it's important, once again, while we're disrupting ourselves and making sure we reach the audience, because great content is nothing without an audience. So you need to remember this as you're working with your, you know, your, your content um, queen and king. Um, and a lot of people, you hear a lot of pundits now talking about the real C word is actually conversation, or conversation is God. So-so, I don't know about that yet. Um, but the real C, and I'm leading to this, when you have all your content across multiple platforms, products, places, physical product, you, you name it, you're managing a lot of things of your brand. So what I feel is the real C, or the C word that we need to keep um, uh, uh, focused on and move forward with is in fact curate. And we should all keep calm with all these windowing that's going on and, and, and focus on this. Um, let me speak about curate and why I think this is important going forward for all of us in the future of kids TV and, and, and dealing with the local and uh, international brands. I just, I picked three colors. They might mean something to you, they may not. And why it's important, you must deliver and curate your brands according to what your DNA is because over time, people get to recognize what you stand for and what you look like. Of course, if you have a linear channel, we all know what that is and how that branding stands for and your schedules and the rest of it. But the future is, and I think you would agree with me, that all this is, coming, is changing because distribution is queen, but distribution will become a commodity at a point, is that it's all going to come through to apps or a device. So more and more, if you don't curate to your brand, people won't associate uh, what they will get when they watch you, click you, download you, or whatever it is. Because 
very quickly, everyone's going to be playing this, this game of content. So if you don't differentiate yourself by the way you curate, and I also think that's a key success factor for us in Boomerang is that we you know, are in the branded game and the big three, four are very good at curating their branded environment. So this is a, this is a key point I'd like to deliver. Just quickly on comedy and animation, because everything's about an experience, and I don't need to speak to you about that. Everyone's heard about, everyone will pay for experience, everyone wants the experience. And I think the experience for the future of kids' TV will be comedy and animation. Uh, there is live action, there are other genres, and there is a spectrum within comedy. There's, there's uh, slapstick, more urban dialogue driven. You'll have that spectrum to deal with. But overall, this is where the direction is. And it's because basically, you must surprise and delight your audiences at all touch points, whether it's on air, off air, whether it's HD, the game, that experience is what people will come back to. And there's nothing more powerful than the experience of laughter or humour. And I'll give you three reasons why I think comedy is important. And of course, animation travels borders. Now, we had, I had a quick look at the top five or so shows around the world internationally, and three of them keep coming. Um, there's, a, there's a pattern here, so just this is what came up. These three shows. I can't take credit for this artwork because I, I, I crowdsourced and a, um, a, a person called The Drifter Within created this online and I found this while I was doing some research and it does represent the power of animation and comedy and the ability to travel around the world. So if I was to sum up why comedy and animation, there are three things to take away for this. One of them, and being a little bit selfish here, but we all are in the TV business or, or the video business uh, to be more specific. Comedy repeats. We don't all have the budgets to produce you know, 600 hours a year. Our studios don't output that much. If you make dense comedy, whether it's visual or urban, where you can watch it again and experience something again, it will repeat. It's a valuable commodity in our business. The other thing about comedy, it appeals to kids. I, it has more gender uh, a flow over. Boys and girls like to laugh. If you go to action, you know what happens. If you go to, to rosy coloured pink and horses and stuff, you know, it goes the other way. The other thing is that animation, as proven through our experience, travels. It's easier to localise because you can, you can deal with 50% of the experience in a local way when you dub. So therefore, animation travels. This will be the future. Some people say we're in the golden age of television. I actually think we might be on the golden age of comedy animation with the way things are shifting in the last year and some of the hits that are coming out from across all the big players in this game. And I'm not just speaking about Cartoon Network here. Lastly, just quickly, I want to speak about cats. Mm. And to sum up, the secret for the future is blue cats. Blue cats rate. <laughs> there is no question about it. It's that simple. <laughs> On a serious note, I just want to uh, finish up by sharing you the references that I think you should be reading these two books. I don't know if you've re heard of it. Highly recommend you get a bit more scientific. I recommend these two books. Check them out. Thank you for your time.